the $16.1 million of extra funding that is going uh, towards SAPOL out of uh, last week's state budget. Uh, the $16.1 million is principally about the state government honouring its commitment of recruiting an extra 313 police to the South Australian Police Force. Uh, the 313 extra police officers will result in South Australian Police Force having its largest uh, numbers in its history. Um, it will result in the South Australian Police budget being um, the highest number that it's ever been uh, in its recorded history. Uh, $16.1 million is critical uh, to ensuring that we honour our election commitment of having the largest police force in the state's history. Um, one critical component uh, of the decision that uh, the Police Commission and I have taken is our commitment to ensure that South Australians have the best opportunity to be uh, working within SAPOL, which is a great place for any person uh, to work. Uh, the Police Commissioner and I have made a decision uh, to stop all active recruitment uh, interstate and overseas of police officers. This will ensure that South Australians have the best possible opportunity uh, to work in what is a great working environment. Uh, the opportunity to work within SAPOL is truly a privilege, um, a privilege to serve the community um, and to keep the South Australian community safe uh, generally. And we want to see South Australians working within the South Australian Police Force hence the decision to stop all active overseas and interstate recruitment of police officers. Um, the new uh, 313 target will be uh, 2020. Um, this is a target that um, the Police Commissioner and I uh, believe can be reached and will result in the largest number of people working within the South Australian Police Force uh, within its history. I'm more than happy to take any questions and I believe um, the Police Commissioner is able to take a few questions as well if need be. So Minister, this is a broken promise. Sorry, Robert. This is a broken promise? Absolutely not. Our, uh, our state government's commitment to recruit 313 police officers will be honoured, and will be honoured uh, by 2020. And the reason why we've made the decision to extend the time on out to 2020 is to ensure that we do give South Australians every opportunity to work within the South Australian Police Force. Sure, but this was first laid in 2010 for rollout in 2014, and then in 2013-14 it was pushed back to 2018, and now here we are standing here and you're pushing it out another four years. So why can, why can people at home sit here tonight or whenever they hear this and have faith that this is actually going to happen and that we are going to see more police on the boat? Because we've allocated $16.1 million to achieve the target of 313 extra police within the police force. Upon taking on the responsibility of being Minister for Police, one of the first things um, that I wanted to get my head around is what we're going to do in order to achieve uh, the election commitment. And the Police Commissioner advised me that we were on track to reach the 313 target by 2018, but in order to be able to honour that political timeline, it would necessitate the re active recruitment overseas and interstate of people in the police force. And I think in the context of um, the South Australian government's commitment uh, towards jobs in our state, that we want to make sure that South Australians have every opportunity to be in those jobs. Hence the decision to delay the timeline by two years. But that is all about making sure that South Australians have every opportunity to work within St Paul. Sure, but considering the need that, that the Labor government clearly identified back in 2010 that there needed to be more police on the beat, uh, you're still not delivering that. I mean, how can, how can that be a good thing? Surely there's, an, there's an, a need which has been identified and basically 10 years after it was first identified, you're gonna, it's now saying that we might finally see those officers out in the streets. How is that a good thing? Well, already in South Australia, we have the largest number of people working in the force in the state's history. I mean, our state government record uh, when it comes to the size of the police force, I think, is unparalleled. Uh, we've seen a doubling, an in excess of doubling of the police budget since uh, this state Labor government came to office. We've seen more officers on the beat than ever before, and we want to see uh, that continue, hence the decision to put an extra $16.1 million uh, into SAPOL, which is principally about ensuring that we honour the commitment of having the 330 extra police in the state. Why is the extra funding needed though? 313 was budgeted. Why, why do you need extra well, funding to recruit? I, I might let the Police Commissioner make a contribution towards that, um, but put simply, um, the Police Commissioner advised us that um, additional resources were needed to ensure that we can honour the target going forward and hence the decision to put the $16.1 million in. And obviously you say that to meet the target by 2018 we would have had to recruit overseas. Why are locals wanting to be police officers? Why can't you recruit locals? Look, I might let the police commissioner speak to the specific recruitment challenges, but what I would say is that I think the critical point here is that we are making sure that we're going to have South Australians within the South Australian Police Force. 
presented with an option of honouring a target by 2018, but that resulting in us recruiting people from overseas, I don't think is what South Australians would reasonably want, hence the decision that we've made. I might let the Police Commissioner answer some of those specific questions if, if that suits. Thanks, Minister. Um, Overseas recruiting targets uh, serving police officers in other jurisdictions and when we recruit those people we're able to bring them into South Australia Police in a more streamlined training program which means we can deliver them onto the front line in a quicker fashion than we can with local recruits. Uh, we do get significant interest in recruit application positions and uh, from, a, from a local community perspective and we'll continue to see that level of interest in policing. However, to recruit locally means we're recruiting people who don't have an experience in, or any experience in policing, uh, which means they do the full 12 months training program. That's the reason why, um, in order to meet the government commitment under the previous policy setting, we would have been recruiting from a UK base. Commissioner, how successful was that overseas recruitment drive? That um, Look, we found uh, overseas recruiting very successful and it's been uh, great for our organisation as well. Uh, we've learned a lot over the time that we have been recruiting from overseas in terms of the best way to integrate um, serving police officers from other jurisdictions into the South Australia Police. Um, very effective. Our attrition rate uh, of those officers who uh, come from the UK is relatively low in the context of the sort of change they have in their experience, but uh, uh, it's not something we would choose to do if we don't have to, uh, as the Minister has said, uh, recruiting locally is our preference. So, were you, obviously you mentioned those people have a particular skill set which is, leads to, I guess, quicker... Uh, quicker training. Quicker training. Does that mean, I guess, locals with more experience were being overlooked for No, the, uh, the, the reason we recruit overseas is to make government commitments in relation to increasing the size of the police service uh, in terms of frontline officers. So in order to meet those targets and the time frames that are set, um, overseas recruiting is one of those strategies. So it's, it's not something we automatically default to, but it gives us the capacity to meet those targets. How badly needed are these extra 313 officers? Uh, we, our current uh, level of uh, resourcing is, I, I believe, adequate for the, the demands that we have on our services. However, by recruiting additional police, it gives me the capacity to uh, invest resources into new initiatives and to make sure that we keep the right number of police on the front line. And will the recruitment going forward still be 50-50 males and females? That obviously has been controversial. Uh, I'm totally committed to uh, gender parity recruitment. However, the government's targets of uh, increasing the, the size of the frontline police service to by, th by 313 is an overriding priority. So my endeavour is to recruit 50-50. However, I will be meeting the targets. Have you informed the union of this decision? Uh, it's not my responsibility to inform the union. The, uh, the, the Minister would clearly have communications with uh, CASA as a, as a matter of course, and I'll meet, I'll meet with CASA regularly. As I creating local jobs, is there a benefit of creating, oh sorry, hiring locals over people from overseas in the state? Oh, the benefit is that we have South Australians uh, working in the South Australian Police Service. I think that's, that's got to be a good thing. Um, it's not to say that the people we recruit from overseas or in the state don't add value to our, our, our workforce, but. Uh, and my preference is to provide South Australians an opportunity for a job in the South Australian Police. And just to clear up about the actual extra funding, so why is that needed? Because more training and because of the delayed time frame? Uh, exactly right. The delayed time frame it makes it more difficult for me to bring those people online within the time frame set. Plus, a proportion of that funding is being used to uh, remove police officers from custody management duties and put them onto the front line and recruit additional civilians who are working in our custody suites to look after prisoners in that context. How is the civilianisation of certain aspects of the police force going at the moment? Uh, we have a, a, a measured response to civilianisation and there's only limited positions that we are considering uh, for that type of activity and it's based on the ability to actually put police into frontline positions rather than having them doing uh, non-police related functions. So just to clarify, your slide paper got this, this target which has been moving for the better part of a decade. You're satisfied with your current frontline staff in the force? That's correct, yes. Yeah. And I think we're on track to uh, increase uh, police numbers to a point where I'm able to invest resources into new initiatives that uh, are emerging that uh, require a police focus. Do you think it's possible to reach this target any earlier? Uh, as I've said, we, we, we had a, a, a strategy in place to meet the government's targets for 313. However, under the new policy setting, um, it gives us the flexibility to recruit locally and I'm sure we'll meet that target. Your major review of the police force and how it's structured obviously suggested a lot more civilianisation. It's been pushed back against that as well. Are you committed uh, to that model? I'm committed to the district policing model that we've been working on for some time now. Uh, we're at a point where we'll be, uh, I think, making an announcement about the, the final version of that model, uh, which will release our workforce.
course, and then more broadly after that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that uh, this is an opportunity for us to make sure that the resources we have available to us are used in the most effective way possible. What was out in the public was, was quite a dramatic change. Is the final version likely to be quite similar? To it, it will be quite similar. Um, and I'm, I'm also confident that uh, people within the community will find that the level of service they receive from South Australia Police will be as good as, if not better, than the service they were receiving under the previous model. This new model that we are um, developing, as I've said, will give me the capacity to ensure that I have uh, the most effective police service, the most responsive, and that I can put the police resources where they best need to be serving. And so change hours at police stations? That's part, of, that's part right. of the discussion, absolutely. It's about making sure that our services and access to our services is aligned with community requirements. So uh, is that likely to go ahead, or are that closures and restricted oh, hours, or are you looking at potentially revising those? Uh, we've, uh, we've we're just at the point of closing off our consultation process for the um, police station opening hours. And uh, once we have uh, assessed all of that feedback through the consultation process, we'll determine what the final position will be and then we'll make an announcement about that in, in due course. I need to stress though that this is about um, ensuring that we have police officers where they are best able to meet the community's needs. And I, I have a view that uh, police officers performing an administrative function outside of business hours is not the best use of those resources. Minister, do you mind me asking, how have your conversations about this pushback of timeline gone with the um, Police Association so far? Are you informed? Uh, I spoke to the Police Association uh, on Budget Day briefly. I had a chat with uh, Mark Carroll. Um, I'm pretty confident um, that the Police Force, the Police Association and, and its members would be happy about the fact that the State Government is committed to, the size, to increasing the size of the State Budget um, towards policing, including the $16.1 Work. Um, and we need to make sure that we do everything properly 